Good evening, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 17th, 2022, could on 7.20 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about this evening, including Tropical Storm Fiona south of Puerto Rico. We have new hurricane warnings that are in effect, and could this affect the United States East Coast? So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a look across the tropical Atlantic this evening, we can see Tropical Storm Fiona is sitting to the southeast of Puerto Rico at this point, moving off towards the west-northwest and could bring some very substantial impacts to portions of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola over the next couple of days. If we look at the visible satellite imagery as the sun begins to set, we notice a couple of things this evening. First of all, we notice if we back it up here and kind of rock the slider here, we notice that you can very clearly see where the low-level circulation is, right in here where the kind of the lopsided X is. That's where our low-level circulation is this evening, to the southeast of Puerto Rico here. And this, again, is mainly devoid of any significant convection, any deep convection around that circulation. But we notice that it is certainly now embedded within the overall larger cloud field, indicating the continued presence of organization. If you look here at the San Juan Puerto Rico radar from Mark Missenbaum here, we notice that we do have what appears to be a primitive eyewall structure trying to form. We notice that the center is located right in here and there is some convection that's trying to wrap around here in kind of the semicircle on the western side. Now, this is having a hard time. We're still dealing with some west and southwest shear out of the southwest here uh, that is forcing the convection to be blown in the opposite direction. And also we notice that this convection is not actually all that deep. It's only about 40 to 45 dBZ uh, at times, which means that it's not very intense convection, but you don't necessarily need super intense convection to do the job with some intensification. If you look at the recon plane that was in there from earlier this afternoon, we noticed that in the first couple of passes, it was very disheveled. However, at the latest pass uh, from earlier this afternoon, the recon plane did indicate that pressures were beginning to fall and a more tighter low-level circulation was becoming established in this vicinity. And that has tried to remain the case throughout the portion of today. And of course, we have a new recon plane that is entering the storm now, which will get a better sample of the intensity. Now, looking at the track forecast here, again, this is expected to become a hurricane prior to reaching Puerto Rico sometime by late tomorrow night or early Monday morning before crossing likely could be over Puerto Rico or just to the west of the island there and then passing somewhere in the Mona Passage between Puerto Rico and Hispaniola while sliding towards the northwest here. Eventually, sometime by Tuesday, beginning to make more of that upright turn than Wednesday turning off towards the northeast. This latter part of the track forecast is highly uncertain and there's a lot of variables that are going into play here. If you look at the overall tropical cyclone watch warning map, we do have again a hurricane warning that is in effect for the entire island of Puerto Rico at this point. We also have tropical storm wa uh, warnings that are still in effect for portions of the far northern leeward islands and a hurricane watch for portions of the northern and eastern part of the Dominican Republic at this point with tropical uh, storm watches and warnings to the south and west of there. If you look at the overall risk impact, we do know that there is a high risk of impacts across portions of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico at this point, including portions of St. Croix and the U.S. British Virgin Islands. We notice that, again, here's this high risk demarcation zone right here, and we notice that this has continued into all of Puerto Rico this main threat is, is going to be for significant rainfall, which we'll get to in a second. And then there's also still a significant risk of impacts even further west of there into portions of central Hispaniola at this point. And there is virtually no threat for impacts the further west you go towards Haiti. If you look at the wind impact here, we notice that again sustained. This is the sustained wind forecast. We notice that sustained winds of 50 miles per hour are to be expected across portions of the east central part of Hispaniola with about 70 miles per hour, uh, 70 to 75 miles per hour as you get towards the coast here. And again, that 75 mile per hour range kind of extends all the way into portions of southwestern uh, Puerto Rico at this point with kind of all of Puerto Rico experiencing at least 50 mile per hour sustained winds at this point. Now, this is also highly dependent on the exact track forecast because any deviation left or right here will play a significant role on who gets hurricane force winds and who gets uh, what type of uh, exact impacts. If you look at the rainfall forecast, this is by far the most significant threat here. We notice that there is a widespread potential for over 15 inches of rain across the entire island of Puerto Rico at this point. 
especially as you get towards central Puerto Rico here. Uh, widespread 10 to 15 inches of rain is to be expected. And even the eastern part of Hispaniola at this point could see upwards of about four to five inches of rain. Again, this is going to matter depending on the exact track of the system and exactly what the training bands, what convective bands do. Uh, and, you know, depends if you happen to get on one of those training bands, they can dump a lot more rainfall than that. Uh, but overall, the impact is expected, especially across the eastern part of Hispaniola into Puerto Rico, uh, anywhere between 5 to 15 inches of rain, especially the island of Puerto Rico there. So that's why there's a high risk of impacts. Now, focusing on our drop sons here, we've had a NOAA uh, upper level reconnaissance plane that has been sampling the storm uh, for the better part of this afternoon. We can see all the drops here, thanks to uh, Alex from CycloniceWX.com. And we notice that here's all the, the uh, drops on the reconnaissance aircraft so far. And we notice that, again, what's happened here, we're looking at uh, the geopotential heights here, the, the 500 millibar heights here. Uh, we've noticed that, again, we do have a ridge that is out here across the central Atlantic, and that is actually beginning to weaken, and that will be sliding eastward while weakening. And we notice that across the storm environment, the uh, pressures in the 500 millibar range are down which means this is going to begin to move uh, more towards the northwest here and following kind of the escape route, if you will, around uh, the subtropical ridge. We also notice that the relative humidity towards the north of the storm is not all that great right now. You can see north of Puerto Rico at this point by you know, a couple hundred miles, we have only a 22% relative humidity. And uh, even around the storm environment here towards the northeast of the center, we have about 41 here. But the closer in you get, about 92% relative humidity. So the moisture field is significantly increased from what it was a couple of days ago. However, there is still some drier to the north of the system. And we can see that again, this is the uh, one of the uh, drop zones here. We noticed that uh, there is still some dry air in the mid levels here. Not a lot, but there is some. This is kind of more so foreshadowed though that we do still have some wind shear. We noticed that we have kind of these uh, winds here that are generally from west to east. And then in the upper levels here, we kind of have the uh, kind of north-northeast to south-southeast winds here, uh, indicating that there's still the presence of vertical shear in the atmosphere. And further, so this is actually shown here to the north of Puerto Rico, we have some substantial dry air that is north here. Now, part of this is actually from the tropical cyclone itself. You notice where it's actually located, this drop zone is located in the cirrus plume here. So there's actually going to be some subsidence uh, down here towards the surface and, and a loft here. Um, and then you can see kind of where the cirrus plume is uh, right up about uh, 250 millibars or so where our temperature and dew point lines are pretty close together indicating cirrus clouds up there. Uh, but we also notice that there's still some shear. We've got that kind of uh, southwest to uh, northeast flow here at the surface. And again, part of this here is contaminated by the tropical cyclone outflow, but generally speaking, we've got uh, winds that are in the opposite direction. So there's a little bit of shear still in the atmosphere that is working on uh, Fiona this evening, but will be decreasing with time. So the exact intensity forecast is going to play a significant role in the track, and let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Look at the H4 forecast. This is a 12Z run valve for 8 p.m. this evening. We're looking at the 200 millibar wind pattern now we notice that Fiona this evening, according to the H wharf, is 995 millibars. We'll see if that is confirmed by the aircraft reconnaissance mission. But we also notice that again we have these series of troughs that is across portions of the northwestern part of the Turks and Caicos at this point and the Bahamas. We notice one trough here and another trough over Florida at this point. And this actually might be the extension of the same trough. Uh, but we noticed that this is actually still going to create a little bit of vertical shear. We kind of notice how it actually dips down here. So this is still creating a little bit of vertical shear within Fiona this evening. And that won't really lighten up at least for a few days. Now, on this particular track here, the h wharf takes the center directly over central Puerto Rico, kind of the south central part of Puerto Rico at this point which is actually coming into a little bit better of agreement among some of the models. And this is certainly now a valid possibility that we could be talking about a hurricane that is impacting Puerto Rico directly making landfall. Now, this is still a low end threat in my opinion, uh, but there is an increasing risk that that could happen. So interest in Puerto Rico certainly 
need to be preparing for a hurricane, especially since you are under a hurricane warning. Now, eventually, this continues to try to move northwest and deepens very substantially in portions of the southwest Atlantic. And again, here is the island of Bermuda right here. This is the end of the five-day forecast. There's Bermuda, and there's our tropical cyclone at this point moving off towards the north and east like this. So this might be somewhat cutting it close to the island of Bermuda here over the next couple of days, but there's even more possibilities than that. Now, first of all, if we look at the HFAS forecast, this kind of follows much of a similar trajectory over the central part of Puerto Rico. Most of the hurricane models have actually come into agreement with a strong hurricane impacting Puerto Rico uh, within the next about 24 hours or so. Very significant model differences between the global models and the hurricane-specific models, and certainly this is a very valid possibility, so interest in Puerto Rico need to prepare for that. This eventually crosses over and we could still have impacts to portions of the Turks and Caicos and Hispaniola over the next couple of days. And we'll look at that right now. So this is the European 500 millibar geopotential heights here. We're just really looking at about 18,400 feet in the atmosphere. This is the 12Z run valid for 8 p.m. this evening. We notice what's trying to steer the storm right now. We've got a weakening ridge across the subtropical Atlantic, kind of in the, in the southwest Atlantic right here. That is generally trying to steer our storm towards the west-northwest here, kind of trying to round this ridge at this point. This ridge begins to weaken and back towards the west, and we notice that in this particular run here, even the h or even the ECMWF uh, does carry this over Puerto Rico and then into Hispaniola at this point. Now, within 75 hours from now, we've got a shortwave trough that is amplifying off the coast of New England at this point, and that is going to begin to try to turn our storm uh, towards the north here. And so this eventually captures this and begins to tug it uh, more towards the north. And then we have another trough that is amplifying uh, over the uh, Canadian prairies in the northern United States, moving eastwards, sliding into New England and portions of the Atlantic Canada. This will only further uh, help to catch this system and pull it on out and hopefully out to sea at this point. However, there is a wide range of possibilities. We notice that there's actually an extension here by uh, about uh, five days, five to six days from now. There's this extension of this upper level low here sitting right over uh, kind of the northeast U.S. that is trying to dip a little bit southward. And if this, in fact, maybe becomes its own parent low here or is a little bit stronger, and maybe a little bit further south, this actually might interact with Fiona and try to tug it more towards the north here. And eventually, potentially, this becomes a threat for New England. Now, right now, this isn't necessarily what's favored on the forecast models today. However, that is certainly a very significant possibility um, if this trough manages to be a little bit quicker here and also a little bit stronger. Now, there's also another range of possibilities here. If we look at the European ensembles, we'll move this out to about day five. We still notice that, interestingly enough, there is this cluster that is further southwest here towards uh, the Bahamas at this point within about five days. The majority of members are towards the northeast, but we cannot discount the possibility this is a little bit further southwest uh, than what some of the models are showing. Now, certainly that uh, chance is dwindling by the very second, but nonetheless, it's still there. And eventually this curves out and notice how some of the models do get this pretty close here to uh, Bermuda over the next couple of days. So we'll have to watch for potential impacts there, but we're several days away from that. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.